This is the new Canon EOS M6, one of Canon's interchangeable lens compact system cameras in their EOS M lineup. The body is well designed. It's got a nice grip on the front and a small thumb grip on the back, so that when you're walking around with it, it feels nice and sturdy in your hands. It can come in a single body or a kit. Here I've got the 15 to 45 mm lens on it, and that can be locked down small if you're just walking around with the lens. And then when you want to use it, you can unlock it and that's it in its normal usable state. Now in this video, I'm not gonna read out an in-depth spec list. There is plenty enough of that online. I want to try out some of the features of this camera. However, the main things you need to know are these. It's 24.2 megapixels, runs the incredibly quick Digic 7 processor, has dual pixel CMOS AF for fast, smooth autofocus during video, which by the way, shoots at full HD 60 frames per second, five axis digital image stabilization for a smoother handheld video, and a screen that flips 180 degrees upwards. Being an interchangeable lens camera means you can use all the lenses that are available in the EOS M range, as well as fitting the optional adapter from Canon, meaning you can then fit all of the Canon EF lenses as well. So you have a huge range of focal lengths that you can use with the M6. The M6 is perfect for street and travel photography because it's so small and discreet, just like other cameras in the M range. However, what makes this a little different is that it's also fantastic for video. There are some great features in there. And on paper, it's perfect for vloggers. To test out the usability and effectiveness of all those video features in a real world situation, my brother and I, who's also a colleague at Park Cameras, decided to go into Brighton, which is our hometown, and try and vlog for the day. These are the results. Okay, so the other thing I'm liking about this is it deals with changes of light actually really well, which a lot of these sort of cameras don't. How freaky is that? So we've had a really good day in Brighton doing a bit of vlogging. Admittedly, it's not my normal video style, so I felt a bit awkward, but I was really helped out by the fact that the EOS M6 is quite small. That was a really nice feature. Um, as I say, we could have put an external mic on it, um, which I'm assuming would improve the sound quality. We haven't actually listened to it yet, so I don't know what the internal mic's like. Um, so I've, ju I've just tested it with the internal mic, because I think, let's face it, if you're, if you're gonna be walking on, if you're gonna buy an EOS M6, which is so small, um, and you're gonna be walking around a city with it, plus with the 180 flip up screen that you actually wanna be able to see yourself in, really putting a mic on top of the uh, hot shoe, it's not, it's not the best option in my opinion. Of course you can, but I don't know. I don't think it's really in theme with how you'd use the camera myself. Um, but the image stabilization uh, seems to be working really, really nicely actually. Uh, that five axis digital image stabilization seems to be really holding up. Haven't seemed to have a problem with focusing all day. So again, the dual pixel CMOS AF seems to have really done its job there. Um, and the, the video itself, I mean, we haven't watched it again on a big screen but it seems to be dealing with low light really well. I mean, we're driving around the car park at the moment, so it's pretty dark in here. Um, it seems to be dealing with that really, really well. Um, so really pleased with it on the whole. Um, for this sort of video work, seems perfect. After watching the footage back, the one thing I was really, really impressed with was the internal mic. We decided not to attach any shotgun mics or tie clip mics or anything like that throughout the day because I wanted to see how it fared just as this small kit and the internal mic I was actually really pleased with. The other things that really stuck out for me was the dual pixel CMOS AF. The autofocus seemed pretty flawless all day and there was none of that horrible searching that the lens sometimes does on other cameras. And the image stabilization, that five axis digital image stabilization that you can use in video seemed to work really well. We didn't use any tripods, we just walked around handheld all day. The only thing that we used was a Manfrotto Pixie at one point, but that was just to hold it further away from us as we were vlogging. So again, it wouldn't help to stabilise. So the image stabilisation, again, really impressed with. The only downside for me is that you have a mic input, which is fantastic on a small camera like this. Doesn't seem to happen across a lot of the market. But to put a mic in, you, you pop it in here, and obviously a lot of them you slot into your hot shoe. 
Now, the only downside is if that if you're vlogging yourself, obviously you'll quite often use the 180 degree flip up screen. But if you've got a mic on that hot shoe, it does somewhat get rid of the capabilities of that screen. So that's that's a slight downside, but there's not many ways they could rectify that other than to have a big screen coming out this side. So it's not really a big issue. Now, the M range don't have the biggest sensors in the world. So the next thing I wanted to test was how well it fared when it was maybe getting a little bit darker. So my partner and I decided to take a trip to the Brighton i360, which I have to say was absolutely fantastic and I would recommend it to anyone. It was great fun. And we went just as the sun was going down. So it got a little bit dark. There was some lights starting to twinkle on in Brighton, which was really nice. And we decided to see how it fared in the dark. This is the footage from that. Now going on something like the i360 is a really fun experience and a lot of people who use this camera will be using it for travelling around or going on holiday and that sort of thing. So the really huge upside for me was that this is a small camera to carry. It fits in a small bag or on your shoulder, it's not weighty. And the downside to carrying a full frame DSLR all the time is that it's big and heavy. And if you're going on something like the i360 and you just want to enjoy yourself and not think about things too much, it does mean that you've got something really small and discreet to carry with you. It also performed pretty well in the low light situations. The video especially seemed to be really nice. It wasn't full of digital noise or anything like that. So I found it pretty effective to use in a low light situation. The last real world test that I wanted to conduct was to see how well the M6 performed in a really high contrasty environment. So I brought it to one of Sussex's most beautiful gardens and tried it out where we have really bright skies and kind of dark foregrounds. You could really see the sharpness of the 24.3 megapixel sensor when looking at these images. I was impressed with how it managed the dynamic range of the image and with the scene modes that I used, the landscape one especially really brought the highlights down and the shadows up so that you got a nice, almost HDR effect on the landscape shots. All in all, I loved using this camera. It's so small and portable and discreet. It's well designed, easy to navigate menu systems. The connectivity is great for sharing images and videos online. The features that it has, especially for video, are incredibly effective. And because of that adapter you can put on ESM, you have a huge range of lenses as well. You can't really go wrong with it. Now, if you need any more information about it, you can visit the website, give us a call, send us an email, or even pop a comment below, and we'll try our best to help you out. Thanks for watching. Don't care about the camera, I want cake. Macaroon.